ready to rumble? Good try. <laughs> Yo, what's going on, E7 fam? I'm Sue, but feel free to call me Pat. Whether you just pulled Urban Shadow Shoe from the custom Mystic Summons or off a random Galaxy pull, this guide will help teach you everything you need to know about the character to help you get started. So, let's learn how to play Urban Shadow Shoe, starting with her stat line. Urban Shadow Shu is a dark warrior of the Ares Zodiac symbol. She shares a stat line with Edward Elric as well as Laia. Taking a look at her stats, she has 984 attack, 637 defense, 6266 health, 117 speed, 15% critical hit chance. It says 35% here, but this is due to her passive Wild Charge, which you'll learn about in the next section. 150% critical hit damage and no starting effectives or effect resistance. She is the third highest speed amongst all warriors in Epic 7, but as far as drawbacks go, she has pretty low attack and pretty mid-tier health, especially for a health scaling bruiser. It not only hinders her damage, but makes her survivability not as good as you'd expect compared to some of the other warriors in the game. Her English voiceover artist is Carly Craig, who is an established comedian famous for being on Mad TV, and you could also hear her as Bob Model Kana and Alencia in Epic 7. Her Japanese voiceover artist is Maria Naganawa, who you could also hear as Kana in the anime Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid, and if you play a number of other gacha games, you may know her as Biscuit from Goddess of Victory Nikkei and Huo Huo from Honkai Star Rail. I'm always open to new opportunities. Urban Shadow Shoes skill 1 is Zibidi Zap. It has a 0.5x attack multiplier, as well as a 10% max health multiplier. If this skill is used during Shu's turn, she gains 1 focus and 15% combat readiness. Like I said, I know everything. The damage multipliers on Zibidi Zap are just okay. They don't really stand out that much compared to other health scaling moves. Since the extra effects of Zibidi Zap only trigger during your turn, you can rule out counter set and unity set as possible equipment choices for Urban Shadow Shu. Urban Shadow Shoe's skill 2 and her signature passive skill at that is Wild Charge. It increases the critical hit chance of Urban Shadow Shoe by 20 to 30 percent, depending on Malagora. It grants her one focus as well as the bzzzt buff at the start of each of your turns. If her focus is full, it resets the cooldown of her skill 3, Operation Cream Pastry. Bzzzt is a unique buff that deals 2,000 fixed damage and injuries to all enemies at the end of the turn. This pretty much gives Shu her defined niche. Every turn translates to 8,000 fixed damage to the enemy team. It also reduces their maximum health. This means that every turn you take with this character is a step closer towards a free win, all while reducing the effectiveness of tanks, soul weavers, and health scaling bruisers. Considering all of that, and that Zippity Zap only gets bonuses during your turn, you start to realize that Urban Shadow Shu is a shoe in for the speed set. Yeah, that joke was terrible. Let's just move on to the skill three, which is Operation Cream Pastry. You acquire two souls upon use, as well as two focus upon use, and it has a four to five turn cooldown depending on Malagora. It is a single target attack with a 0.5x attack multiplier, as well as a very good 25% max health multiplier. It injures the target by up to 25% of the damage dealt and grants the speed buff to all allies for two turns. When focus is full, using Operation Cream Pastry will consume all of that focus and play a unique animation that heals Shu for 20% of her maximum health. If the attack doesn't miss, this move will also deal damage equal to 60% of the injuries on the target. Time to pay up for taking you lightly. What, you think this is a joke? Are my sweet babies all ready? Wipe them out. Nothing in this world is free. In case you needed more proof that Shu is actually Sonic the Hedgehog in disguise, she comes with a team-wide speed bump. This accelerates you into even more stacks to further injure the enemy team. The 60% bonus damage on Operation Cream Pastry, by the way, is incredibly powerful. Using the base version on turn 1 allows for the enhanced version to be ready as early as turn 3. By the time the enhanced version is available, you will most likely have dealt between 4 and 6,000 fixed injury damage to the target, as well as up to 25% of the damage dealt on your initial skill 3. 
The enhanced Operation Cream Pastry is very easily capable of killing any enemy hero in the entire game if you are targeting them when they have roughly 35 to 45% of their health bar already injured. This move single-handedly, in my opinion, keeps certain character archetypes out of the metagame. Hellscaling bruisers like Apocalypse Robbie lose a lot of their luster, and slower stall-based soul weavers such as Ruel of Light can't really set up for a long-term game plan as long as Urban Shadow Shoe is on the battlefield. Urban Shadow Shoe Soulburn changes the multiplier on her S1 Zibidi Zap from a 0.5x attack multiplier to a 0.8x attack multiplier, and from a 10% health multiplier to a 16% max health multiplier, all for the cost of 10 souls. In my opinion, it's an okay soul burn. It's not exactly the greatest. I think you're better off using your souls for something else, but if you need the bonus damage to finish off a target, that's what it's there for. I'm always open to new opportunities. When it comes to Mulligora priorities, I think no matter how you decide to play Urban Shadow Shoe, you want to max the S3 Operation Cream Pastry first and foremost, because if it has higher base damage, it's more likely to get the maximum amount of injury stacks. If you decide to build the character with critical hit chance and critical hit damage in mind, then you may want to prioritize the S2 Wild Charge just as much or higher than Operation Cream Pastry. But as you'll see in the next section, there are some builds of Shoe that don't build any sort of critical hit chance or critical hit damage, so for them, Wild Charge is not really as much of a priority. And lastly, you want to max Zibidi Zap just for the bonus damage. Most of this character's damage comes from the S2 bzzzt buff, but having some extra damage on the S1 can't hurt if you're trying to really pack on that damage or finish off a target. The bzzzt buff, which is really hard to say repeatedly throughout this video, is probably the most important part of Urban Shadow Shoes kit. More injury procs means more damage to the enemy team, and that's going to translate to more wins for you. If you want to find success with this character, building her fast is paramount. Health scaling multipliers and wanting to keep her on board as long as possible means that after speed, you should be prioritizing bulk as your secondary goal. There's two ways you can take this character. The first one we're going to talk about in this video leans into critical hit chance and critical hit damage. This is to maximize the damage and injury output further from Operation Cream Pastry. It's also the most common way to play the character as of the recording of this video. For a speed damage build, you want to be playing this character on a speed set as your four piece setup. For two piece offsets, I recommend Penetration as it increases the damage on Operation Cream Pastry further. Health, defense, immunity, and critical hit chance sets are also viable options. For the purposes of calculations in this video, I'm going to be assuming that you're on the critical hit chance set because, well, it makes the math the easiest. Despite this character's simplistic playstyle, Urban Shadow Shoe is incredibly stat hungry. She's kind of right up there with characters like Conqueror Lewis, so I really tried my best here to make this build accessible to you by giving you stat ranges that you can kind of hopefully land somewhere in between. I recommend 250 speed for this character, but if that's too high for you, consider starting at 240 speed or even lower. As always, if you can hit the desired stats that I'm showing you on your screen, try to push a little bit higher. I personally play over 24,000 health with over 260 speed, but I recognize that's not really realistic for the vast majority of players watching this video. For right side pieces, I go with a health percentage necklace because it makes the most sense from a mass standpoint. It's going to be the easiest. Although, you could use critical hit damage. Since we are a health scaling bruiser, health percentage is pretty much the go-to for the ring slot. And boots are speed since we have to go fast. For your sword, necklace, and ring pieces, flat health is a solid substat choice to help make the math line up in case you can't hit that per piece average. For artifacts, proof of valor gives the most amount of health and keeps us on the board longer, but there are other great options out there. Both Draco Plate and Samsara Prayer Beads give a mix of damage and tank stats, while Durandal can be a cheeky option for players who want to speed up their shoe should your opponents try to focus her down. The second way you can take Urban Shadow Shoe is with an effect resistance build in favor of something like critical hit damage. Shoe's fixed damage is tied to her buffs and requires her to attack during her turn. If she's ever stunned, well, then you can't attack. And if she's hit with the unbuffable status, well, then she doesn't get the bzzz buff from her passive. Either way, the value of the character basically plummets. 
if you want to really improve your odds of making sure that 8k fixed damage goes off every single turn, well then give this build a try. Do note though that this build on average is a lot less popular at high level play, but as always, I'm including it here on how to play for completeness sake. If you're wondering why it's less popular, well, it's because without the critical hit damage, you don't get that big burst outcome from the S3 Operation Cream Pastry. Speed Set once again is going to return here as the four piece set since it maximizes bzzz damage output. For the two piece offset, Resist makes the most sense but a lot of players also have health, defense, and immunity set pieces that have effect resistance substats. Basically, gear you normally have laying around that you put on your tanks or soul weavers. 130% effect resistance should be your target on Shu for the same reason that you'd use it on a character like Arya. And that is because you get 70% with the artifact Bastion of Hope, which is what I'd recommend for this build. Essentially, 130% ER plus 70 from Bastion gives you a nice even 200%. This means that only the highest of effectiveness heroes is going to slow your shoe down, such as say maybe effectiveness Zeo or a really geared out pirate captain Flan or Solitary of the Snow. You can also use the artifact Strax Gauntlet in case your Bastion of Hope is in use or the limited artifact Sweet Miracle to keep debuffs off of your shoe. For right side pieces, health percentage necklace is the go-to with the ring being a toss up for health percentage or effect resistance. My calculations are going to assume that you're on a health percentage ring as you'll surprisingly have an easier time with your per piece average with it compared to an effect resistance ring. Boots, as always, are speed so we can take turns in a timely fashion. As with the previous build, feel free to pick up flat health on your sword, necklace, and ring in order to make the per piece average required on this character a bit easier. As always, let's round out this video with some matchup knowledge, starting with some allies for Urban Shadow Shoe. Her primary role is to dish out injury-based damage and soften up health-scaling heroes for easy kills for your team. Naturally, this synergizes really well with two types of characters, tank busters, such as Strazze and Hua Young, as well as control or injury-based characters, such as, say, Death Dealer Ray or Solitaria of the Snow. If you're looking to protect your shoe from harm, Consider tanks that have built-in crowd control, such as, say, Unbound Knight Arwa, or maybe even an Ambitious Tywin. And if you're worried that your shoe's going to get focused, you can always fall back on a character like I, Karina. As for advantageous matchups for Urban Shadow Shoe, they include characters with powerful health scale and kill moves, such as Laia or Dark Corvus. She's also really good at softening up tanks while reducing the effectiveness of their skills. Think of damage-dealing tanks, such as Last Rider Krow or Yulha. Also, due to her speed and the fact that Operation Cream Pastry can kill characters very quickly, you can put a lot of pressure on Soul Weavers and supports. Consider characters that try to play long games like Destina or even someone like Ocean Breeze Lulica. Basically, you can just bully their Soul Weavers into using their skills early or they'll never get the chance to use them at all. Finally, let's talk about the Rat's bad matchups. The most obvious one is going to be Solitary of the Snow, since she stops your ability to generate focus. She also has targeted stuns, which is really, really bad for Shu. Characters that start with or produce a lot of barriers block a lot of the damage from the bzzz buff and the injury that it generates. Characters like Arwell can do this really well for her team, and she can even stun Shu to boot. Finally, any hero with the ability to land unable to be buffed on Shu is really problematic for her. Angel of Light Angelica can not only do this, but with her silence, lock down Shu and make it so that she can't use any of her abilities. Her offense just never gets started. There are other heroes out there like Bihu, Savior Auden, and Briar with Chisaria that have the ability to stop her from gaining buffs while also putting pressure on her life total. And that's gonna do it for how to play Urban Shadow Shu. I wanna give a big shout out to Prop Boy for teaching me the skills necessary to edit a video like this. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below about the new style. Is there anything I need to kind of add to it? Anything that's missing? Anything that could be improved? Any and all comments would be super helpful. And if you want to see more how to play guides that I've done in the past, there should be a playlist on your screen now. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye now.